All right, thank you. So in my talk about uh, Rust versus Julia and scientific computing, I'll be trying to answer the two questions. Does Julia solve the two language problem? And when is Rust the actual solution? So the two language problem that Julia promises to solve is about prototyping in a language that is dynamic and flexible like Python and then rewriting your program into a statically um, typed compiled language like C++ for performance. Let's uh, see how concurrency looks like in Julia. So here we have a very uh, simple example with a counter initialized with uh, zero, and we increment this counter in a for loop. So in Julia, multi-threading is very easy. It's just a matter of adding the macro at threads before the loop, and the loop is uh, then um, multi-threaded. But uh, if you take a look at the results of counter, then you see that they are random. This is because of data races. So um, let's try to translate that into Rust naively. Um, we use Rayon for um, parallel iterators. And if you try to run this code, then it will basically not even compile. This is because the borrow checker in Rust um, makes sure that data races are basically impossible. Um, the correct Rust version um, can be achieved by using atomics, for example, as seen here. Um, and if you take a look at the Julia code that is also correct, then it looks very similar because Julia also offers atomics and we can use them to have thread safety. But the point here is that um, Julia will not warn you about uh, possible data races and you have to debug them yourself. Um, so my question is, do we really want um, only easier multi-threading or do we also require correct multi-threading um, in, in this um, time? And I think that the answer is Rust. Uh, for more um, details about parallel data, um, working with parallel data, uh, take a look at this uh, talk from yesterday. It's highly recommended. Okay, let's talk about project scalability. So Julia has the JIT compiler, which provides performance, but is performance enough? Well, producing efficient machine code is not the only purpose of a compiler. Um, what about static analysis? So if you take a look at this code in Julia, um, we have a vector initialized with uh, one value, and then we print uh, OK, pop some uh, element, and then we say no problem. Julia doesn't see a problem in this code and it will happily run it until it reaches the third line. So it will print OK from the second line. And then from, uh, on the third line, it will um, give us an error at runtime because we are using the Rust syntax and not the syntax from Julia at the right. Um, but Julia cannot detect that, only at runtime. This is a problem, especially if uh, your buggy code is behind a condition. Let's say you are running a Monte Carlo simulation and so on. 50% um, of the time when you are running this code snippet, you will just get uh, your code uh, um, printing no problem. 50% of the time, it will give you an error. Have fun testing and finding this out and debugging it later. Um, what about error handling? We have here a vector initialized with one value, and we are trying to take the last two elements uh, from this vector and multiply them. Because it only has one, of course, it will give us an error at uh, runtime in Julia. How does it look like in Rust? In Rust, uh, pop gives you an option, so you have to handle it, and you have to deal with the case where something doesn't look like um, doesn't, doesn't run as you expect. In this case, we are saying, okay, if you don't get an item, uh, use the default value of one because it's the neutral um, element for multiplication. So the question is, how often do you run your Julia code just to make sure that it actually runs correctly? And are you confident about being it correct um, after that it runs one time? Um, let's talk about performance. So if you only care about performance, there are uh, sadly performance food cones uh, in Julia, as I like to call them. So uh, for example, if you initialize here a vector with uh, no values, so it's an empty vector, and you work with this vector v later in your code, then your performance is degraded to something similar to Python 
why. This is because uh, Julia cannot detect the type of this vector and therefore this vector has type any. So Julia cannot optimize this code and it will not tell you about such performance killers. So enough bashing against Julia. Where does Julia actually shine? For me, it's interactivity. So the ripple in Julia is very fascinating. Um, you can use it for quick calculations and so on. Notebooks like Jupyter and Pluto in Julia are just a perfect fit. For small scripts, when you need the instant feedback, just use Julia, it's very good. You don't want to wait for your uh, REST code to recompile just to see a change after uh, changing one line. So for example, in plotting, you need instant feedback and Julia is very good at it. Um, Julia also have an ecosystem centered around scientific computing. So you have uh, linear algebra, for example, built in differential equations, which is the best differential equation solver um, objectively, uh, objectively um, that we have right now. We also have uh, plots.gl for plotting and Mackie, which is an ecosystem for visualization accelerated uh, with GPU. Just check it out, it's awesome. So let's get back to the initial question. Does Julia solve the two language problem? My question to that, uh, my, my answer is no. Um, but it's, it's not a war. Uh, both languages should coexist. And the, uh, the question is then, when do you use Rust? Well, basically when you have non-trivial concurrency, when you require maximum performance, when you have a project with more than one simple script, when you have programs that run for a long time and you need your, the reliability. Julia is perfect for interactivity, so also for teaching scientific computing, it's easier to teach and it's also enough for many use cases for beginners, uh, just use it for teaching and presentation of re uh, results is Julia, in Julia is also very good. So that was my talk. It, uh, you can think about it as a trailer for my blog post about Rust versus Julia, please check it out. I did spend many uh, hours on it. It has more points that didn't fit into the talk of seven minutes. Here, uh, how it looks like, I will post the link in the chat. Thank you.